and you can see that the net debt is minus 51B. So basically, their cash and cash equivalents can cover their debt and have a surplus of $51 billion, which is... Hello guys, so welcome back to another video. And today we're going to do an analysis of Baba stock. And so my analysis is going to be based on the fundamentals of a company because as you already know when you purchase a stock you are purchasing a piece of the company and so i thought of a way to actually make fundamental analysis easily understandable by like the general public so i hope this actually helps to put things into perspective and without further ado let's start okay and so let's start off with like a mini comparison you can see from the left and the right there are two stocks and these ten thousand dollar like what it means is that if you were to spend uh, ten thousand dollars this is essentially what you're getting um just based off of the numbers ignoring everything else and so you can see that if you spend ten thousand usd on this particular stock over here it is going to be an asset that generates one to six five dollars and from that its profit is going to be three four three and its cash flow is going to be three to nine and right now this asset that you're buying has hundred and one dollars uh in cash so essentially you are paying nine thousand and nine hundred dollars for for the profits and earnings um that it will generate and on the other side the other share let's call this uh, the other stock rather let's call this stock B and you can see that if you spend ten thousand dollars this asset is generating six two eight six in revenue nine oh nine in earnings and one two two nine in cash flow and it also has one six nine seven um dollars in cash so essentially you are paying eight point five K for it to generate um, this much in uh, profits and usually when I invest I like to see how long it takes uh, for my asset to double so if we assume that the share price remains constant throughout no ups and downs then it would take 9.1 uh, years for this particular stock to um, double in its asset value because every year it generates um, 909 in earnings. We're not taking cash flow, let's just take uh, earnings because it is um, the lower number. And when we invest, we always want to be on the safer side. Even though, um, in my opinion, cash flow is the more correct number. Because earnings, you can always um, add stuff inside that. Let's say like a depreciation of a building, which doesn't actually depreciates because usually um, buildings go up in value unless like the lease is very short so if you write that off like oh my building depreciates uh, 1 million this year so um, your earnings will decrease but um, your cash flow doesn't actually decrease so that's why there's always a disparity between earnings and cash flow and usually most companies have a lower cash flow um, than their earnings because I think like maybe they want to make um, their earnings look good uh, because it is in um, the PE ratio which is on like the front page of every single stock but don't quote me on this I think that companies probably do get taxed uh, I mean okay not probably they do get taxed and so maybe I'm, I'm not sure if you um write off a lot of stuff like depreciation of your assets um you might be able to be taxed uh, lesser and um i mean i'm not an accountant so i'm not gonna like figure that stuff out and just sharing my thoughts as well investing doesn't need to be super accurate i think you just need to have a rough gauge of the share value and it becomes quite obvious whether um, something is a better buy or something is undervalued or something is overvalued so yes and the reason i'm doing this is because um having these two shares without telling you the share name is because i'm trying to um focus more on the numbers and i think the first thing we need to ask ourselves when investing is do we think that this number actually makes a difference like 
these two numbers over here? Like, do we think that it actually um, increases the worth of a stock or do we think that it doesn't? For the people that say it doesn't, what if the earnings of this stock per year is 10,000 USD? So basically, it doubles every single year. Does it matter then? And if it matters then, then why does it not matter now? Just because the numbers um, are not like super clear cut. So to me, um, how do you know if something is an investment? You should be able to value the asset um, based on its fundamentals, based on the income that it generates and not just from like a random stock price. So case in point, something like gold or something like crypto, like how are you actually going to give it a value if it doesn't generate anything? So anyways, let me just review the two stocks now. This one over here is actually Apple stock and this one over here is Baba stock. So I hope it is very, very clear that um, Baba is like way, way, way undervalued even on its own. But if you compare it to something like Apple, which I feel is um, overvalued as of now, then it becomes even clearer um, that Baba is actually um, very undervalued. Um, even though we should never um, just do a comparison between companies and think that one is undervalued just because the other is overvalued, because they can both be overvalued at the same time. But based on these numbers over here, it is uh, very, very... Uh, undervalued in my opinion and later I will share more on uh, how to actually value it on its own even though like I said uh, investing is kind of like an estimation game and you just need to um, get a good estimation because it is impossible to like have like pinpoint accuracy on a stock um, Literally, whatever earnings report that we have is something in the past. We don't know if um, the numbers have changed uh, drastically uh, on the day-to-day -day unless you are like literally working for the company and have all the numbers available to you. So we can only do our best to estimate and then go by that estimation. Okay, and so right now, Baba has a market cap of... 197 uh, billion dollars and i did my calculations based on um 197 billion dollars or 77.5 my cost basis is around 75 uh, as of now and to be honest if it drops even more to like 68 69 range or even lower um, i would consider selling all my disney shares and go uh, all in on baba okay and finally it is time for numbers so so as you can see over here, you can see that Baba's revenue has been increasing uh, from $8 billion uh, all the way to $1 to $5 billion, uh, even though there's like a drop here um, from March 2022 to March 2023. Um, that may have been um, the cause of um, the share price drop. Um, but as you can see, it kind of peaked in 2020 and has been um, on decline since then uh, after its peak and even with um, so-called record-breaking years um, in 2021 and 2022 you can see that um, prices has been on the decline so um, I just want to say also that usually the news always like find a reason um, to justify the share price so when it goes down the news will come up with uh, any reason to say that um, this is why the share price has dropped, blah, 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 blah. So um, I don't pay attention to the news uh, at all. So I think the numbers uh, tell a better story. And we will take a look at the earnings report later um, because also it doesn't show a, a drop in revenue, which is kind of weird. But either ways, um, I'm buying based on uh, the fundamentals of uh, factoring in uh, the drop. And let me also just share with you something quite ridiculous because um, in 2014, uh, the share price is actually higher than right now. So they used to do $8.5 billion, $8.4 billion in revenue in 2014 when the IPO. And right now, it is lower than um, when it initially um, IPO'd. 
and the revenue has basically more than 10x so like it is pretty damn ridiculous um but of course uh you have to do like the fundamentals and everything so like you can't just say just because it's lower than ipo then it's cheap but i'm telling you that it was crazy expensive last time and right now it is pretty cheap okay moving on you can see that um baba also has um a lot of uh, cash and cash equivalents of um 33b peaking at uh, 49b in 2021 um but you can see that uh, including short-term investments uh, they have 78 uh, b and which is crazy because um they basically have one third of their market cap in uh, short-term uh, investments and cash so they could literally buy back one third of the company and why does that matter it matters because if they buy back one third of the company essentially um, your earnings per share uh, or the value of your share goes up um, by that much as well like if they buy back half of the company then um, essentially you are 2 xing um, the value of your share and you can see that the net debt is um, minus 51b so basically um, their cash and cash equivalents can cover um, their debt and have a surplus of 51 billion dollars which is um, not common uh, in shares or in stocks some people will argue that um, having more debt is better because you're leveraging and you're expanding faster um, and I think that is true, but also at the same time, if I had to choose between a company with lots of debt versus a company with negative debt, I would pick a company with negative debt uh, almost every single time. Because I think that uh, sometimes in business, there's always like unforeseen circumstances. And if you already have a pretty high um, debt or if you are um, already leveraged quite a lot, uh, if shit hits the fan, then... Um, the company might not be able to survive. For example, um, like Disney, if they um, went through COVID like unexpectedly, which is, it was unexpected. So then all their parks had to close down and so like um, their profit margin and everything will take a hit and they basically would likely have to um, take up debt um, to help them tide through the time. And if they were already leveraged near to the limit, then they wouldn't have been able to go through that tough period okay so something i want to highlight um is actually this over here you can see that um, they generated 29b um in the past 12 months and if you take 197b which is the market cap and you divide it by 29b um you get 6.79 so basically the price to cash flow per share is 6.79 and this number that I'm going to give you, which is a P.E. ratio of 7, is actually um, a number that is said to value companies uh, without growth. So if you imagine a company that will be stagnant forever, um, the right P.E. value for it is um, 7, according to Warren Buffett's mentor, Benjamin Graham. So I think it's a pretty legit source. Even though, to be honest, um, it is kind of a pluck from the air kind of number um, because there's, or at least to my knowledge, um, there is no fundamentals behind why a company should be um, fairly valued at a price-to-earnings ratio of 7. But basically, a price-to-earnings of 7, um, if you take 100 divided by 7, you will get the earnings yield, which is 14.2% on my phone. And what that means is basically... Um, for every $100 uh, invested, the company is generating $14.2 uh, every single year. And this number is a lot, uh, especially if you uh, base it off of like the modern stock market. Because as investors got smarter, they uh, valued growth a lot. And basically, if a company is going to grow at a very, very high pace, then paying more than a 7 PE uh, would make sense. Sometimes paying a 30 PE uh, would make sense for some investors um, if they think that um, they're going to grow at a very rapid rate. For example, if um, they can grow at um, a 100% uh, increase in net profit, basically the company will go from a 30 PE this year um, into a 15 PE next year 
And if they continue that trajectory, then it's going to be 7.5 um, price to earnings. And then uh, after that, uh, 3.75. So basically, um, as an investor, you want to, or if you're an investor that um, is trying to find like uh, stocks that can generate you a lot of return, uh, I think this fundamental uh, way of thinking um, is the right way. Um, however, in my opinion, I think that um, I would much rather purchase a stock that doesn't factor in the growth um, versus a stock that factors in growth because we can never predict the future. If you buy something at a 30 PE, your earnings yield is only, um, I think, around $3, $3.3 3 um, if the stock price is 100 So let's say you buy um, or you put in $100 worth of your money into stocks, um, and that stock has a 30 PE, you're basically only generating $3.30 uh, per stock or per $100. And to me, that is a very, very, very bad return. Uh, you would much rather have or purchase a company that has um, a higher amount of profit generation because what happens to a stock when it doesn't fulfill its growth for example if you're betting that the company or if you're projecting that the company is going to increase um, in profits um, by 50% next year but it only does um, 20% which is pretty damn uh, crazy already uh, for a well-established company to increase their profits by 20% every year but because you factored it factored in a high stock price or it factored in the growth so um, the stock price is very high then um, the stock will definitely uh, crash or most likely crash because um, it doesn't fulfill um, the projected growth that most people thought uh, it will be able to generate I hope that makes sense uh, if it doesn't then please leave a comment below and then I'll try my best to uh, explain it uh, in a better way so later I will uh, quickly skim through uh, Apple and uh, explain why uh, even though it's a good company um, you can still actually overpay for a good company like the price that you enter um, or the price that you purchase a company at um, has a lot to do with investing there are so many uh, good companies out there that are overpriced and there are so many normal companies or like decent companies um, that are uh, underpriced. Um, but in my opinion, Alibaba is a great company at a crazy cheap price. Um, or not crazy cheap, but like pretty damn cheap. Like I, I think uh, most people would still not go in at $70, $65. But if let's say it hits like $50, $40, then uh, to me it's like a no-brainer. Sell your house, sell your kids, sell your liver uh, and buy the stock. Um, the only thing or the only way that you can go wrong is um, if there's like uh, accounting fraud, <laughs> which happened to me before, by the way, when I bought uh, Kraft Heinz. So yeah, best not to um, go all in in a stock if you're not able to um, recover. So yes, you can see free cash flow per share 9.53, which is basically what we did, just that um, they did the math for you and calculated uh, the free cash flow per share. All you need to do is take um, the current share price and divide uh, it by the free cash flow per share, and then you can get the price to free cash flow per share. Yeah, same thing, uh, revenue per share, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and that's basically all the numbers that I'm going to go through. So I'm just going to give you like a rough comparison to... Um, something like Apple. I'm going to give you guys a quick comparison versus a stock like Apple and so you can have a rough gauge of um, the numbers. Um, so let's go. So yes, as you can see, um, Apple is right now $2.994 trillion, um, the market cap, and then uh, the share price is uh, 192 And as you can see, um, they generated... Uh, a revenue of uh, $383 billion, which is pretty damn insane. Um, but if we take into account their market cap of uh, almost $3 trillion, you can see that it is um, slightly over 10%, maybe 15% of their market cap versus Alibaba. Um, their market cap 197 uh, and their revenue is like 
120 billion. So it's like kind of like 66%. So if we scale Apple's revenue to be like Alibaba, it would be around $2 billion uh, in revenue. So if Apple generates $2 billion in revenue, it would match uh, Alibaba's market cap to total revenue ratio, which is crazy. It's like six times more. So, so yes, net income, blah, blah, blah. As you can see, um, Apple also has a net debt of um, negative $38 billion, which is uh, very impressive for uh, most companies. Like I said, is um, usually a positive number for net debt. Um, but Alibaba, which is 15 times uh, lower than Apple in market cap, has a higher or a lower net debt, like 50 billion, negative 50 billion um, than Apple. Uh, in terms of ratio, in terms of size, everything, um, like if we compare Apple to Alibaba, um, it is clear cut um, Alibaba just based on valuation itself. Just to give you um, some examples, you can see some net debt uh, companies or, or some uh, like usual companies' uh, debt levels. Um, Starbucks 109B uh, market cap and they have a net debt of 20B. So yes, they have more debt than they have uh, short-term assets. And an example of uh, a crazy level of debt, Warner Brothers market cap 27.7B and um, net debt of 42B. So basically they have more debt than their market cap. Um, but I also want to point out that uh, net debt to market cap is actually not the best way to uh, value a company's debt. I think something more fundamentally sound would be net debt to revenue or net debt to um, earnings or net debt to cash flow. Because, uh, for example, a stock that I regret selling, which is um, Paramount Global, they had a market cap of 15B and their debt was, um, I think, more than 15B. Wait, no, they had a market cap of I think 7B, 8B, 8B. And I could have held on to my shares, um, but I didn't. Um, because I think they had a net debt of uh, 30B and so to me I was like holy crap this company is like crazy in debt but if I'm not wrong um, their revenue and earnings is also uh, at a safe level compared to the debt or like not at a crazy um, level that it doesn't make sense so it made sense but anyways no regrets um, I still would prefer to hold um, Disney shares um, over Paramount Global even though Paramount Global just shot up by like 50 plus percent but stock price um, going up doesn't mean a right and stock price going down doesn't mean a wrong so gotta focus on the long term picture and uh, you know I think we will do well and uh, another example you can see Disney market cap 165B um, net debt 36B so Basically, they owe 36B after like deducting their shares, I mean their cash and like um, other like short-term investments and stuff, I think. And uh, you can see Target, it's like a American supermarket thing. Uh, you can see that um, they have a net debt of uh, 17.6B and a market cap of 65B. So like a quarter of um, the market cap. Just to give you guys a few and how... Um, of how usual companies uh, look like, they usually don't have uh, a negative uh, net debt like Baba and Apple. And yes, Apple's um, cash and uh, short-term investments have only they only have like 61B, uh, which is actually a lot. But uh, compared to their market cap, they can maybe only buy like five percent uh, of the company. Versus Alibaba, you can buy one third. It's crazy. Uh, so yes, cash flow from operations or cash from operations, uh, 110B, which is 1 over 30 of uh, their market cap versus uh, Alibaba, which is 6.7, 1 over 6.7. It's crazy. Baba is very, very cheap. And lastly, basically comparing the same thing, uh, if this math is easier for you, 6.33 uh, divided by 192, and then you can get uh, like 30 plus, I think. So versus uh, Alibaba, uh, 77, 77.5 divided by 192, 
9.53 you get that 6.7 that i mentioned so yes finally let's take a look at um their earnings report uh you can just google uh what's that alibaba investor relations and then you can uh, like choose whatever you want to see we are going to look at their fiscal year 2024 interim report i think this means uh six months uh and this means uh, like a full year so their year is like pretty weird i think it ends in march or some shit so it's like uh, even though we just reached 2024 but they already have a six month report for 2024 so yeah let's go yes i am right six months and i'm going to be honest with you guys um i did not really um take a look at um their earnings report uh, before even buying my first load of shares um because um when i saw like it was crazy because i think i just came across like alibaba and then i was like uh like yo what the fuck like this uh it's a screaming buy basically like the numbers out i had to like double look at the numbers because um it just seems like too good to be true so um i immediately bought it because uh, i don't want to um think that okay yeah let, like there's like accounting fraud and whatnot um i just like trust the numbers hopefully it is not fake and uh i just went to sell disney shares to buy even though i think disney is also a good investment so yes let's continue uh and a lot of their thing is in um china's uh currency rmb um even but seeking alphas is in uh, usd so it's like there's going to be some uh, disparity there but uh, i think we can just look at oh there is us as well yeah but basically as you can see um their year over year changes is like quite uh, good like anything above 10 percent to me is like pretty damn good 20 percent is crazy and 50 percent is like insane so um it i am not sure why it could be like the weird year thing um but it seems like on their finance uh report their fiscal year earnings report is they have been um increasing um their profits uh year over year but on seeking alpha um the app that uh the thing that i subscribe to uh it says that there's like a drop in earnings so i don't know why it could be like a um after factoring in the currency change but uh, it doesn't matter like it is still like a good deal to me and um, i'm still gonna buy regardless but don't be like me you should do uh, even more research and um, to make sure that um, the numbers uh, make sense and the numbers are verifiable um, so yes as you can see there's a pretty healthy um, growth uh, in revenue a total or like an increase of 11% uh, even though there are some uh, segments that have increased like 66% uh, 47% um, but I think their larger businesses uh, is um, not performing the best for example like this cloud uh, intelligence which is uh, quite a big chunk of their uh, total revenue so that's why uh, even though there are things that has uh, increased a lot the total increase is only uh, 11% so yes, moving on, a lot of the things have already been summarized uh, by uh, Seeking Alpha. So that's why I used it. And to be honest, I think all this is too into the details and I don't want to bore you guys. Yes, and as you can see, um, their uh, cost of revenue uh, has also went down. Total expenses went down um, while increasing um, their uh, revenue according to the earnings report even though on uh, seeking alpha it is uh, decreasing yes they have recently um, said that they will be paying a one dollar uh, dividend per share uh, not this this is like uh, they are like real shares the shares that i bought is like a um, cash flow earning shares it like it mimics the company like I, I honestly don't really know the exact details but it's like it owns the cash flow but like i guess you don't have like voting rights and not and and whatnot but to be honest um i'm only owning like a few k so it's like it's not going to be 
uh, enough to like swing a, bo- a vote and even if I can control what they do I wouldn't want to control what they do I would rather um, they do it themselves because I think uh, they know what to do better than what I know what to do to do for them so yes I just leave the experts to uh, go ahead and control the company and to be honest um, I would rather they um, buy back even more shares even though um, they have already bought quite a lot of shares if I'm not wrong um, the number is 12 billion in 2023 and they have around let's say I think around 12 billion as well um, to purchase or um, registered to purchase uh, in the coming years and also, them paying out uh, $1 per share is only $2.5 billion and they have $50 billion that they can pay out. So, like, it is very, very little. Or you can also look at it as um, them cash flowing $9 plus and they're only paying um, $1 in dividends. Most companies that uh, are considered dividend payers usually pay, um, let's say, like 50% to like um, 75% uh, of their cash flow or of their earnings. So if, let's say, um, Alibaba, which cash flow is $9 per share, were to pay uh, 50%, they would pay $4.50, which is over 5% uh, in dividends. So you can see how crazy undervalued uh, Alibaba is. And yes, I think the rest we have kind of went through. So I am just going to um, talk a bit more before I end off the video. Okay, so thank you for watching. Um, if you have a company that you would like to uh, have an analysis on, um, do let me know. And uh, if I'm interested in the company, then I would definitely um, do an anal- analysis on it. And if you have any thoughts or uh, if you think that I missed out anything, uh, do let me know and then um, maybe I can cover it in the next video. And to be honest, um, I don't think uh, investing is supposed to be like crazy complicated. Like you don't really have to like look through every single um, earnings report and uh, follow the news and everything. Um... But I think understanding um, the numbers that they produce or each company produces uh, is very, very important. Um, you need to at least be able to estimate uh, how much um, the company is worth and from there um, decide if you should enter um, this particular company. A few key things um, that I try to look out for is if there are like one-off uh, special items, then I would definitely um, try and figure out uh, what is that special item. Because sometimes, uh, let's say, um, there's a special sale of, um, like, I don't know, their building. Let's say, for example, Alibaba sells a building um, that is like worth uh, 30 billion. So in that year, um, there would be a spike uh, in their profits. And then if you take that into consideration, uh, like if you think that that's what's going to happen uh, next year as well, then you would be uh, likely going to overvalue the company. So that is um, one thing uh, I would look out for. And one thing that I would really, really ignore is actually like the news and everything. Uh, even though I think um, it is hard to... Uh, detach yourself from what people are saying um, but for example like last year um, when I bought a uh, meta stock everyone was saying that like uh, it is a bad stock blah, 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 blah. Uh, but then suddenly when prices uh, of the stock start to increase uh, news on the stock like starts to uh, get better and you start to see like there's uh, no one shit talking uh, meta anymore and uh, everyone suddenly singing praises to Meta like it has only been a couple of months. Like why is the news going from like bad to suddenly like super good? Like what has the company done in like such a short amount of time? Like to be honest, uh, it is just all like entertainment. Um, and actually I react um, opposite. Um, when there's bad news then I would like to look at the company and if there's good news i would likely want to stay away from the company so sometimes uh, when i see uh, people talking good about uh, alibaba or disney stock i get a bit scared i'm like yo 
shit why is everybody thinking that it's a good stock because if um there is a lot of like greed sentiment on uh, a certain stock it means that uh, it is already like whatever good is already priced in but on the flip side um, if there's a lot of like bad news on the stock then there's a lot of uh like negative sentiments or like fear and which is good because it means that uh, it is priced lower than it should be usually so that's um, when i would take a look at the stock uh, when there's like a lot of bad news but at the end of the day all of these um, negative sentiment positive sentiment um, good news bad news thing like it doesn't matter um, i think uh, we should focus uh, more on the numbers um and usually, uh, I think things will work out uh, in the end if you follow the numbers. But if you follow the news, then uh, you might not have uh, the best uh, result. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Subscribe.